Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today starts now. There is no doubt about it, Memorial Day weekend in the middle of a global pandemic will look very different. It will eventually end at some point and things will get better. The actions and choices we make over the next few days and weeks will determine what the summer looks like for all of us. How you and your family can maximize the fun and minimize the risk. And we will have your coronavirus headlines in just a moment, but let's take a look at your holiday forecast and looking outside. You can barely see the Detroit skyline. Just look at all that fog. We really want to make sure the weather is good for this holiday weekend. Good morning, I'm Priya Mann. Good morning, happy Saturday Priya. I'm Sean Lane. Memorial Day means honoring the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country in the military. The weekend also means boating for a lot of folks, barbecues, a big part of the weekend as well. So let's talk about that weather. Do you see that fog, Priya? How about that? Yeah, that is a pretty thick layer of fog, Andrew. We did notice the mild temperatures on our way in. What's Saturday shaping up to be like? Well, it certainly does get warmer, and the fog eventually lifts and dissipates as we go through the morning. It's still down, though. Visibility is still way down, down toward Monroe, where it's down close to zero. Port Huron, around a half mile visibility. Same thing over in Lenawee County. So be careful in those areas along the I-69 corridor and south of I-94. Now, later today in your four-zone weather, the farther inland you are, the higher temperatures you'll see. 76 for our friends and neighbors over in Southfield, 72 to 75 here in Detroit, but closer to 60s to near 70 degrees even cooler closer to Lake Erie, Lake St. Clair, and Lake Huron. Those are the areas in green that you're seeing to our south zone. But you notice farther to the west, farther inland, away from that cooler water, we're looking at temperatures well into the 70s. 75 to 76 from Livingston County in the western Oakland County in our west zone. Same thing to our north. Yes, temperatures in the 60s for the most part, cooler near Lake Huron, but farther away, 77 in Emmett, Imlay City around 75 degrees. And above our heads, we're looking at mostly cloudy and foggy conditions for this morning, but partly sunny skies later today once the fog goes away and we make it into those 70s. Right now, you're looking at that fog over downtown Detroit, Metro Airport, not as foggy, so visibility is up to around 7 miles and still pretty mild at around 59 degrees. Now, there is the chance of showers and thunderstorms. <laughs> what would a Memorial Day weekend be without them, right? Well, that chance is coming. We'll talk about that in your full seven-day forecast. Andrew, thank you very much for the all-important weekend forecast 702. Let's get everyone updated now on the latest here on COVID-19 in our state. Yeah, the official recovery total is 28,234. We are expecting our weekly recovery update this afternoon. We'll keep you posted on the numbers. Meantime, here's a breakdown of our current case count. With 403 new confirmed cases of coronavirus reported Friday, the state of Michigan is nearing the 54,000 case mark. And as our latest update from Friday afternoon, they were confirmed. 29 new deaths from COVID-19. In total, we've lost more than 5,100 people to the virus. The state reporting nearly 15% of those deaths were people in nursing homes. New updates have been coming mid-afternoon. We'll bring you today's update the moment we get it on clickondetroit.com and right on your mobile app. Also making headlines this morning, every prisoner in Michigan has now been tested for the coronavirus. Early results from the state's 29 prisons show more than 3,200 inmates have COVID-19. Meanwhile, parts of Michigan's economy have slowly started to reopen, but Governor Whitmer, she extended the stay-at-home order around 5 o'clock yesterday. It was set to expire at the end of this month. It's now going to go until June 12th. This caught a lot of folks by surprise. The order keeps places like theaters, gyms, casinos, perhaps hair salons closed. The governor says while making progress here, counties in western and mid-Michigan are now seeing coronavirus cases double every 10 days. And the stay at home extension comes one day after the governor eased some restrictions like allowing groups of 10 people or less to gather, which was welcome news as people get ready for the holiday weekend. It's also confusing, though. Let's get to Jason yeah. Colthorpe, who spoke to people as news of that extension broke yesterday, late yesterday. This is not the sort of thing we're used to seeing, but what better reason to bend the guidelines than to catch a glimpse of a movie star that just happened to show up in Ferndale. As these folks waited with cameras ready, we asked if they were excited about being able to finally get together in small groups. We're having people over so my, my daughter can do tie-dye with her cousin. We're hoping to have some friends over, barbecue, but kind of 
keep spread out, maybe set some blankets out to kind of remember our distancing. My friends and I were going to meet up in a church parking lot and then we were going to sit all in separate spaces far enough apart. We're all tired of looking through the Zoom lens at uh, family and friends. So. And as we were talking, no, no celebrity yet, but breaking news that the stay at home order was extended to June 12th and the state of emergency to June 19th. I'm sad. And I want it to not be extended. Did not realize that and was hoping on going back to work on June 1st. Despite declaring that we have flattened our curve, the governor said the extension is about avoiding a second wave. I thought we were on that track, flattening the curve. We are now going into the next direction and now it's been extended again. So I'm a little kind of taken aback by it. A little disappointment, but I think it's probably the right move in a lot of aspects. My biggest fear is throwing it open too fast and having a, a bounce or a rebound effect on it. It will eventually end at some point and things will get better. And that disappointment was followed by another. As Game of Thrones and Aquaman star Jason Momoa bolted from a friend's house into a car and with a muffled apology was gone. Jason Colper, Local 4. And Jason Momoa apologized to everyone there, and a representative for the actor later explained that he made the escape to avoid a potentially dangerous health situation with crowds gathering. Also making headlines, high-profile inmates like Paul Manafort and Michael Cohen have been released from prison because of the coronavirus. We may be able to add former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick to that list. Kilpatrick's family members confirming they've been told by the federal government that he will be headed to home confinement. Mara McDonald has the details. The Department of Justice has not confirmed this yet, but Kilpatrick's family has. The home confinement approval for former Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick uh, really is a streak of good news uh, after hearing so much bad news. Uh, this is something that's been a collective effort uh, being worked on by so many people. Having a relationship with his mom, um, my heart as a mother, first and foremost, I mean, I'm just glad, uh, I'm thankful, um, I'm appreciative that he's been granted um, a way to safety. Kilpatrick, his family and supporters had lobbied President Trump in February, including State Representative Sherry Gay Dangnogo hand delivering a clemency request to the president personally. Then the pandemic hit and federal prisoners like Paul Manafort are being given COVID releases. Now Kilpatrick. Norman Yatuma, who represented the family of slain exotic dancer Tamara Green, thinks this is absurd. I think it's terrible. Kwame Kilpatrick devastated the city of Detroit, devastated countless people, countless families, countless businesses. He committed an awful lot of crimes. He ought to do the time. As you might imagine, opinion is mixed. I believe that Kwame has a chance to come home and right all of his wrongs. I believe that redemption is for everyone. This does not mean he'll be walking around free. He'll likely head to his sister's home in Atlanta for home confinement for an unspecified period of time. His son Jonas posted this to Instagram and then took it down. The caption, Pops, can't wait to hug you outside them walls. God will prevail over evil. See you soon. Hashtag Kwame Free. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thank you. Late Friday, the U.S. Attorney's Office responded to our request for comments saying they have not been told of any plans to release former Mayor Kilpatrick. And as the holiday weekend begins, Detroit Mayor Duggan is promising to enforce the governor's 10-person gathering restriction. He says police will be out and they'll be counting. If you get up to 11 or 12, the police will uh, politely ask you to reduce the size. Uh, but uh, uh, short of that, uh, this could be a time to enjoy the weekend. Uh, respect the limits and, and the police will be responding uh, accordingly. But it has been really uh, um, a great level of cooperation, very little in the way of, of difficult confrontations. And that 10-person limit will also apply to stores in Detroit if they reopen next week. On Tuesday, customers are allowed again at retailers and auto showrooms by appointment only. And the mayor says employees must have masks and gloves. Stores have to put up signs and markings to keep customers six feet apart. And there must be a physical barrier between the cash register and customers. As the state extends the stay-at-home order, northern Michigan areas 
giving us a glimpse of what could be the future. Some bars and restaurants reopened Friday for the first time in months. They're limited to 50% capacity. Diners are required to sit six feet apart. Servers must also wear face coverings or masks. Customers tell us they're happy to be dining in. Owners say getting their employees back is certainly a challenge. It's like uh, being released from jail. To be open today, I had to call old employees and beg them to come back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had enough workers. As you know, northern Michigan has not been hit as hard by COVID-19. Some business owners have asked people from other regions to stay out until restrictions are lifted in those regions like southeastern Michigan. And this will be the first weekend that Catholic churches in Metro Detroit are open for public masses. Meanwhile, on Friday, President Trump addressed the nation, deeming places of worship, quote, essential. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united. The people are demanding to go to church and synagogue, go to their mosque. Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part of life. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. In America, we need more prayer, not less. At my direction. And the president also saying that the CDC is providing guidance to communities of faith as they work to reopen. And Sean, we've been talking about the weekend all weather long, all weekend long. I mean, this is a holiday weekend, Memorial Day, of course. We're going to have commemorative services. Folks are going to be gathering small gatherings at home, and we're hoping the weather cooperates. Let's get you're exactly spot on, Priya. That's why we go to this man on your screen, Andrew Humphrey. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning to both of you, and good morning, my friends. We're looking at temperatures starting off in the 50s and low 60s. It gets warmer today. On 4 Live Radar, yes, we see some showers and thunderstorms. Not on the way for today, but they do arrive before the holiday is over. More on that and your 7-day forecast in minutes.